Hi, and welcome to the final session of my Webflow course. We're already at 14, and I hope that you have enjoyed the journey so far. This is the last one, it's about e-commerce. Typically, this is a very tricky feature. And what we're gonna learn today is to set up the whole purchase experience, but unfortunately does not support digital products at the moment. So I'm going to try my best to fit into the puzzle of what we're trying to create. At the same time, you're gonna be introduced to how to set up the payments. And also we're gonna learn how to do some custom code so we can bring some tweets from the Twitter API. Okay, so we're back to our project and we're gonna set up e-commerce by clicking on this button right here. And it's going to say, it's gonna add categories to our CMS, so collections. And then we have to say, let's do this. So as I mentioned, this is a really good solution for physical products, which is why you have to add a bunch of details about shipping, about business address. Um, in our case, we're gonna skip a bunch of things and we're gonna go straight to add a product. Here, we're gonna say mockups and we're gonna set the price to $79. Then we're gonna put an image from angle product and that's the image and we can create it. Let's go back to our setup guide and what we need the most is the checkout page. So if you go to the checkout page, this is where your customers is going to start entering their information and shipping and all that stuff and then place the order. Now that's basically it in terms of setup. We just need to go back to our home and then connect that somehow. So right now, e-commerce does not support a buy now button and you need to have a cart and you have to add to cart first. And sometimes you have to do that from a product page that we have to design custom. But maybe in your version in the future, you're gonna be able to do this. But essentially for now, I'm gonna have to set up a link directly to the checkout page. So I click on purchase and make sure that it is converted to a link block first. And when it's done, then I can do a URL directly to forward slash checkout. This is going to allow you in the preview to go directly to the checkout and people are gonna be able to buy it. But the problem with this is that on the live website, it's not going to add the product to your cart. So for the time being, this feature is not supported. We're gonna have to create a cart experience. So let me explain that to you. If we go to the e-commerce page, you're gonna see that you can actually design a product page. And this is blank, we're not gonna do that. But essentially what you can do here is to add two elements that are really important. The first one is the cart. This is going to allow your customers to see how many items are in their cart. Really good if you have a store that have multiple products. Then you're gonna need to add the add to cart. And this is dependent on the product. It needs to know what product you're supposed to be adding to your cart. It even has a quantity field that is totally optional. But this page is totally dependent on knowing what product we're talking about. If you go to the home page and you try to add a, let's say, add to cart, it's going to say it's not gonna work because I don't know what product you're talking about. So what I need to do is to add a collection list from products. If I do that, I see that I have a single product. So now here I can add my add to cart button. And this is going to know that I'm using the Bonkops product. In fact, I can just use the override. So for example, for this quantity, I can say get text from product, select the field name, and you're gonna see that that's the name that we put just earlier called mockups. You can even get the price and that's exactly what we entered as well. So now this is working, but if you preview this and you try to add to cart, it's gonna say you need a cart to this page. 
otherwise it's not going to open. So what we need to do is select the content block and then add a cart button as well. And if we do that and we preview, we should be able to see this little modal that allows your users to start paying. So that's pretty much what you need to set up. Unfortunately for now, we're not going to be able to add this as a single buy now button that adds this exact amount for the exact products that we know in advance. We're going to need to set up a product experience with a collection or a product page. But at least what I can do for now is to style the button. So I'm going to go to style and go to submit button. And the same for this one, add to cart. And we can customize if we want to show or hide the quantity and even remove the field for the label. For the button here, when we converted this to a link block, it automatically sets the underlines for the text. So what you can do is just to remove that decoration. So before we go, I want to show you how to add some embedded custom code for Twitter. And here we have this design where it's going to show a bunch of tweets from users that might have appreciated a product. And so we're going to build this in Webflow. Let me close the hero section and go to compositions. I'm going to select body and I'm going to press A to add a new section. I'm going to put that section right before FAQ, set the name of the class to testimonials. Let me select that. It's going to scroll. For the testimonials, I'm going to set a padding top of 100 and a padding bottom of 100. I'm also going to reuse this title right here to testimonials. Let me center the text by using a line center. And then I'm going to add a new div block. I'm not using a container because I want to use the full width of the screen. This div block is going to be named tweets. It's going to have a margin top of 20. Now let's create each tweet. So add a new div block. Let's open tweets and select it. Let's rename this to tweet. And then inside that div block, we're going to insert something called embed. So embed allows you to insert any code that you want. It can be a custom code for the styling or it can be an embedded code from the Twitter API or YouTube. In this case, I'm going to go to my Twitter profile. I'm going to go to any tweet and click on this down arrow and I can find embed tweet. It's going to go to another page and it's going to allow you to copy the code. I'm going to go back to Webflow and paste that code right there. Save and close and this should show my tweet. First of all, let me just customize the styling first for the tweet block. We're going to set this one to 400 in terms of width. We're going to have a margin of 30 across all sides. And the padding left is going to be 10. The padding right is going to be 10. We're going to set a background color of white with a radius of 20. And I'm going to add a bit of drop shadow. So angle 180, distance 20, blue or 40, the black at 15%. Then I can duplicate this two times. So I can fix the layout. Uh, right now, I'm going to go to tweets and in tweets, I'm going to set to flex, then I'm going to justify center as well as align to the top so that if the tweet is longer, it's not going to take the full height for the tweet container. The other thing is, if I look at this and it seems that it's kind of uh, making it smaller when the screen is smaller. So what I can do here is to use wrap instead.
So wrapping means that if it does not fit using the fixed width of each of those boxes, then it's gonna go to the next line. Of course, for smaller screens such as a tablet, I can make the tweet smaller, such as 300 instead. And you can see that if I do that, it's gonna try to fit within one line, centered of course, and if it doesn't fit, then it's going to go to the next line. The only way to test custom code is to publish. So make sure to publish it, and when it's done, you can test it, and as you scroll, you can see it's taking the tweet from the Twitter API. All right, that's it. So this is the end of the course, and this is what we have built so far. We've learned so much about workflow, about layouts in general, using CSS techniques and animations like this, using really advanced interactions, how to deal with a e-commerce experience, how to do Lottie animations using the scroll interaction, how to do the parallax effect, how to use symbols and components and styling. Then we've learned how to reuse our components across multiple pages, such as for the FAQ and the login. And we've even learned how to implement a newsletter that is connected to MailChimp. So I hope this is not the end of your journey because I'm gonna give you some homework. For example, we should implement the compositions, which we haven't. This is essentially using the same layout techniques that we've learned, the same content block, Lottie animation, and this is a collection from the CMS. Again, Lottie animations, flex layout, flex layout, collections as well from the CMS, then some more basic layout. Now, I wanna point out that all of the sections source are gonna be shared in the course, including the final one, which has all of those extra elements that we have not implemented yet. You're gonna be able to design the rest of the missing sections using the sketch file, but also by referencing what I have in the final results. So that is your challenge. And on top of that, if you can, try to use your own assets, your own text, your own product, and your own illustrations, your own icons, so that you can create something completely customized, completely unique to your brand. And I think it's gonna be really worth sharing. Again, this course is entirely free. So if you enjoy it, please share it to your friends so that more people can learn those techniques and create awesome websites using absolutely no code. Thank you so much for following my course and I hope to see you in the next one.